I would say overall the read industry has done very, very well. Balance sheets are pretty healthy, low leverage, and, and well-laddered maturities. Generally, a lot of fixed rate debt usage. And in the years after COVID, when money was cheap, the REITs did a really good job of terming out their debt and taking on relatively cheap debt. Joining me today is Bailey Smith, Senior Vice President, Advisory Services with Green Street. Bailey, thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me. Now, you were on a panel here at ReitWise that was looking at the state of the real estate capital markets. How would you describe the overall health compared to, say, recent years? So the mood on the panel was that things are improving, but we still have ways to go. And in the private market, what we're seeing is somewhat of a disconnect between buyers and sellers still. Things are improving from last fall, but debt costs are still relatively high in, you know, in terms of the pricing that we're seeing in the overall market among sellers. So the hope is that we see a little bit of help from the Fed later this year, and that will hopefully start to loosen up the transaction market a little bit. The other point that came up on the panel was that of appraisal values and how those compare to what we're actually seeing on the ground in the market. What you typically see when we've had big movements in value like we've had over the last year or so is that appraisals take a while to catch up, sometimes as much as nine to 12 months. So hopefully over the next year or so, now that we've started to see values kind of stabilize in the, in the private market, we'll see those appraisal values catch up and hopefully that'll loosen up the private market as well. And we'll see a little bit more transaction volume later this year. And continuing on that, any thoughts on the public side? So the REITs have certainly performed better since last fall. And what we're seeing at Green Street is that REITs are trading roughly at NAV at this point on a weighted average basis, maybe a slight discount. And within that, you're seeing a pretty wide range of premiums and discounts at the sector level. So the hope is as the private market starts to loosen up, we see a little bit more transaction volume that some of those REITs that are trading near parity or, or at slight discounts, we'll see a little bit more better performance from them and a little bit more activity in the REIT market overall. And how has the REIT industry dealt with the increased interest rate environment? I would say overall the REIT industry has done very, very well. Balance sheets are pretty healthy, low leverage, and, and well-laddered maturities. Generally, a lot of fixed rate debt usage. And in the years after COVID, when money was cheap, the REITs did a really good job of terming out their debt and taking on relatively cheap debt. So overall, relative to the private market, I'd say the REITs are in pretty good shape. And do you think that listed REITs will use their solid balance sheets to acquire assets from the private side? And what might drive that activity? You know, I, I think you'll see the, the REITs that are trading at premiums and those that are trading around NAV be pretty active this year. And we've seen that from a lot of the REITs putting out their guidance for 24. Um, I, the other sectors where the cost of capital isn't quite as strong and they have to rely on debt, I think debt costs are still a little too high in a lot of cases to really make sense. Um, the hurdles for, for acquisition out there are fairly high right now in terms of cost of capital on the REIT side for some of these sectors. And when you're weighing you know, the, the potential accretion and, and value creation of an acquisition funded by debt versus the incremental leverage that you're taking on, that, that balance doesn't really make sense for a lot of companies right now.